This week on Jerusalem Dateline, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu goes on trial on corruption charges. What will this mean for Netanyahu and Israel? Plus, will the Trump administration and Netanyahu succeed in annexing parts of biblical Judea and Samaria? And Shavuot, the biblical feast of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. In a trial that could take years, the first step began when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appeared in court on corruption charges. It's the first time in Israel's history a Prime Minister has faced legal charges while in office. Prime Minister Netanyahu appeared before a three-judge panel who will determine his legal fate. Just before the dramatic court hearing and surrounded by his supporters, Netanyahu accused the police, prosecutors and the press of trying to depose him. Citizens of Israel, what's on trial today is the wish to eliminate the will of the people, the attempt to topple me and the right-wing camp. For over a decade, the left did not succeed in doing so in the polls. So in recent years, they came up with a new pattern. Sources at the police and attorney's office joined together with the left-wing newspapers. I call them the Just Not Bibi bunch in order to tailor baseless cases. He also said during a TV interview he will not accept a plea bargain and wants full transparency. The trial began here at Jerusalem's district court. While his legal fate rests here, his political future is being tried in the court of public opinion, where both supporters and detractors of Netanyahu came out into the streets. What they will see is a proud people holding their heads high, standing tall and saying, you'll never walk alone, Netanyahu. In the Knesset, some say it's time to go. I truly believe the people of Israel will understand it's time to uh, move forward. Uh, it's time to say to Netanyahu, thank you, but enough is enough. Netanyahu faces charges of fraud, breach of trust and bribery in three separate cases called 1,000, 2,000 and 4,000. Case 1000 centers on gifts he received from wealthy friends for political favors. Case 2000 focuses on an alleged deal with an Israeli publisher to receive positive coverage for Netanyahu. And Case 4000 alleges Israel's major telecom assured positive press coverage in exchange for favorable government regulations. The trial came just hours after the new government held its first cabinet meeting. The next court date could be months away, and some legal analysts speculate the trials could take up to three years. Until then, Netanyahu will be able to serve in the government. In another historic development, President Trump has taken unprecedented steps to support Israel, including recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moving the U.S. Embassy here. Now the administration is taking another controversial step by working with Israel to annex Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. As Julie Stahl reports, this comes in the face of major opposition in the Middle East and beyond. Prime Minister Netanyahu recently presented his reasons for wanting to put annexation to a vote in Israel's parliament in July. Three months ago, the Trump peace plan recognized Israel's rights in all of Judea and Samaria. And President Trump pledged to recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Jewish communities there and in the Jordan Valley. A couple of months from now, I'm confident that that pledge will be honored, that we will be able to celebrate another historic moment in the history of Zionism. Netanyahu and other Israelis see this area as the biblical heartland, first settled by patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It also serves as the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people, who returned here after nearly 2,000 years. Yet many international governments and organizations opposing annexation label it the West Bank, part of a future Palestinian state. As you know, this runs counter to international law, violates existing agreements, and is not in line with international security council resolutions and council conclusions of the European Union. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas plans to scrap all deals with Israel and the U.S., including security agreements, to protest annexation. 
Neighboring Jordan also issued a veiled threat. The words of His Majesty the King of Jordan were very clear. We will not accept annexation of Palestinian lands, and based on that, our chances to reconsider this relationship with Israel in all its dimensions. But Middle East analyst Caroline Glick argues annexation would improve Israel's standing. It's obvious that Israel's strategic position uh, in the region, in Judea and Samaria, and also uh, throughout the Middle East is going to be vastly improved after we do this. And if we don't do this, not only do we harm our relations with the Trump administration, but we undermine our credibility as a strategic actor in the region. The Trump administration is now working to draw up a map along with Netanyahu to determine what the annexation would look like here on the ground. The July timing is important as both Netanyahu and the Trump administration want to make this happen long before November's presidential elections. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Gush Etzion. Coming up, analysis on Netanyahu's trial and the annexation of Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. It was not my grace, but God, that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. Now available from CBN Films, I am Patrick. Get your DVD for a gift of $15 or more. What brings you back, Roman? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. From slave to missionary, who among you heeds the call? Why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? From sinner to saint. Patrick's story began a chain of events that is quite remarkable in the impact that it had. I am Patrick. Those are the words that begin the history of Ireland. I am Patrick. Get your DVD of this inspiring documentary today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. The people of Israel need your prayers as they battle the COVID-19 virus. In CBN's free guide, How You Can Pray for Israel During the Coronavirus Pandemic, you'll discover ways to pray for Israel's leaders and government officials, health care providers on the front lines, Holocaust survivors and the elderly, struggling families, and more. Get your free copy of this valuable prayer guide. Call now or go to cbn.com slash pray for Israel today. Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested. Happily, Christians continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's trial and annexation are two historic developments here in Israel. For more analysis, we talked with Middle East expert Caroline Glick. Glick is the senior columnist at Israel Hayom and the author of The Israeli Solution, a one-state plan for peace in the Middle East. Caroline, thanks for joining us on uh, CBN News. Uh, you've called the trial of Benjamin Netanyahu a show trial. Why do you say that? 
And what do you think is at stake for not only Netanyahu, but for Israel as well? The reason that I called it a show trial is because Netanyahu has been indicted and is now standing trial on charges that don't exist in Israel's penal code or in Israel's law books. Uh, they uh, invented, the state prosecution invented a concept of bribery, which is that a politician accepts a bribe when he gets a good media coverage for supposed favors that he does for media owners. Uh, this doesn't exist on any law book anywhere in the, in, in the world, not in Israel, not in the United States, not in any democracy, because what it basically does is it uh, criminalizes politics. Um, mm. And the same is true of the other two charges, that they were just arbitrarily determined by an out-of-control straight state prosecution that was hell-bent on criminalizing uh, Netanyahu for actions that are not criminal under our laws. That's why it's a show trial. Yeah, why do you um, say that's so dangerous to have this criminalized trying to get favorable press coverage? Because it means that the profession of journalism is a crime. Is it means that any journalist who provides positive coverage for, uh, for a politician or public servant uh, is liable to find himself or herself under investigation for uh, offering bribes uh, to politicians and any politician who has any sort of positive relationship with a journalist uh, can be accused of accepting bribes. So it, uh, it uh, caused mass detriment and, and really destroys the whole concept of freedom of the press in Israel and also uh, criminalizes politics. So this isn't an, even a slippery slope. This is the uh, state prosecution in Israel uh, jumping off the cliff for the sole purpose of trying to uh, uh, criminalize the prime minister and get rid of him uh, through uh, anti-democratic ways. I mean, he was indicted and then he was again, uh, he, he won the greatest victory in terms of the actual number of votes that he received as in, in his entire political career. So, I mean, it, it's really a testament of the fact that the public doesn't buy the charges and uh, is not interested in having him leave. If this trial goes on for years, like uh, many people say it will, what impact could that have on Netanyahu and what he's able to accomplish? Well, obviously, it's got to be a major distraction, not only for him, but for everybody. I mean, he's, he's at, at the cusp of uh, enacting the most important change in Israel since 1967, which is to uh, apply Israeli law to parts of Judea and Samaria, our ancestral homeland. Uh, and uh, so, you know, this happening at the same time that he's standing trial for imaginary charges um, is, is, a very, is, a, is, a, is a very big problem, and it'll go on and go forward so long as this uh, legal charade continues. You know, one of the uh, main things that you, you just mentioned about annexation between Blue and White and Likud, uh, between Gantz and Netanyahu, was the ability to vote on annexation. What are your thoughts on that plan right now? Well, I think it'll go forward. I think it has to go forward. I mean, look, you know, Netanyahu made uh, the, the uh, implementation of the uh, sovereignty aspects of the Trump peace plan a, uh, a, uh, a condition for signing the uh, deal to build a coalition with the left-leaning blue and white parties, that they're obligated to enable this to go forward on July 1st. So I think that this is going to happen. This is the central goal of his fifth term in office as far as Prime Minister Netanyahu is concerned. He has the full backing of the Trump administration for this, and so I think it's going to happen. Yeah, you've spoken favorably about the Trump peace plan, but there are leaders out there in Judea and Samaria that are opposed to it. Uh, do you share some of their concerns? I think that there are problems with the map. I think it's important for uh, our leaders to have a conversation with the Trump administration to see about uh, improving the map, the, the conceptual map that was put forward by the Americans in January. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. I mean, it, it's talking about you know, maximum something like uh, one and a half percent of ter of the territory of Judea and Samaria. So this isn't going to, you know, this isn't going to change the, the the scales one way or another. Um, and I think it's important. But I I think that uh, we mustn't let the the perfect be the enemy of the good here. Uh, Jordan's King Abdullah has implied that he might abrogate the peace treaty. Uh, Palestinian uh, President Mahmoud Abbas has said he's going to abrogate uh, deals with the U.S. and Israel and maybe security arrangements. The EU obviously is against this. What do you think about all these threats by Jordan, the PA, the EU, and others, if annexation does take place? Well, first of all, Jordan is putting out very mixed messages because it's, uh, King Abdullah is telling the Europeans that he's opposed to it and that he's going to oppose it. He's telling the Americans and the Israelis that that isn't true. 
Um, the same, of course, with the Saudis who already announced in January that they approve of the deal. The UAE sent representatives to the White House for the unveiling of the plan by President Trump. Uh, so I, I don't think that we're expecting any major problems with, uh, with the regional governments, including Abdallah. Well, Caroline, thanks for joining us on CBN News. I always you appreciate so your insight and expertise. Thank you. I always appreciate talking to you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Up next, how biblical Judea and Samaria came back into Israeli hands after nearly 2,000 years. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. It's the 53rd anniversary of the unification of the city of Jerusalem, according to the Gregorian calendar. Back then in June 1967, an outnumbered Israel faced a war on every front. But in just six days, Israel had defeated the combined armies of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria, and regained the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the Golan Heights, and biblical Judea and Samaria. As we mentioned earlier, Prime Minister Netanyahu is planning to annex some of that land as granted by President Trump's peace plan. Here's a story from our virtual Israel tour about what happened in Judea and Samaria after the Six-Day War. Much of the world calls the playgrounds these children enjoy an obstacle to peace. That's because they're in Judea and Samaria, otherwise known as the West Bank. Are we witnessing prophecy unfolding right now after the 1967 war? Absolutely. It says yeah. that the sound of children playing in the streets will be heard once yeah. again. Uh -huh. So you hear it, you see it. I spoke with former Shiloh Mayor David Rubin in Shiloh, overlooking the road of the patriarchs, the highway Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have traveled on. Rubin told me the Six-Day War was pivotal in Israel's history. It opened the door for Jewish people to redeem the biblical heartland after 2,000 years in exile. Places like Jerusalem, home of two consecutive Jewish temples, Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus. Hebron, where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their wives are buried. And Shiloh, where the tabernacle stood for 369 years. They all came back into Israeli hands. So you see 67, the Six Day War, just like a pivot, a prophetic pivot in, in time and history? Oh, clearly, clearly. It says in the book of Ezekiel, the dry bones being put back together again. Israel was being put back together again as a nation. If we don't have a right to Shiloh, and we don't have a right to 
Shechem, and we don't have a right to Bethel and Jericho, we definitely don't have a right to Tel Aviv. But not everyone saw the opportunity. It took until 1978 for Shiloh to be established, just above the site where the tabernacle had rested. There were Israelis who were coming here, trying to set up tents on the lower hills of Shiloh. And the Israeli prime minister, who was looking over his shoulder at the American president, uh, kept, kept sending in the army to chase them away. Just months after the Six-Day War, Israelis established the first Jewish community in Judea, about 35 miles south of Shiloh at Kifar Etzion. Jews lived there before Israel's independence war in 1948 and were either evacuated or massacred by the Jordanians. When this group of orphans, of those who were murdered, notified the Israeli government that if you don't give us the permit, we will go on without a permit. The government really couldn't stand up against orphans of those who were murdered. And so Kfar was established. Rabbi Eliezer Waldman was one of those who helped establish the next community in ancient Hebron. There was always a Jewish community in Hebron, even, even during the 2,000 years of exile, until 1929, when the Arabs massacred the Jewish community here. A small group of families rented a hotel in Hebron for the Passover Seder. Essentially, they never left. And I believe then almost the entire population of Israel was with us. Even more than a half a year after the Six-Day War, the spirits were high among almost the entire population. Thousands of Israeli pilgrims enter the old city of Jerusalem for solemn religious ceremonies which All of the media was with us. Yeah, I even remember headlines, passages of the prophets hovering in the air. After 50 years, some 430,000 Israelis live in more than 200 communities in Judea and Samaria. The number jumps to 750,000 if Eastern Jerusalem neighborhoods are included. The growth here has been so tremendous. And as we gotten through those 50 years after the Six Day War and we're looking to the future, so we have this vision of a, a booming Shiloh once again. 50 years ago, what would this place have looked like? Barren desert. There was nothing. It was just hills of weeds and thorns. This road will lead to a new school for the growing population. There are 8,000 residents in the Shiloh Township. More than 2,000 of them are children who study here in Shiloh. We learned that when Israel is not in the land, that the land lays barren. The land doesn't give of its fruit. And now the land of Israel is giving of its fruit because Israel is back. And the most important fruit is what you see right here, all these children here. Still ahead, Shavuot, the biblical feast of weeks, and how the Jewish celebration of Shavuot and the Christian celebration of Pentecost parallel each other. CBN Israel, standing with Israel and blessing God's people. Join us. Get breaking news from the Holy Land. Witness biblical history uncovered. Learn the true story of Israel through groundbreaking films. Help Holocaust survivors and other Israelis in need. Be part of the redemptive story God is telling through His chosen people. CBN Israel. Together we will stand. Join CBN Israel today. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. 
I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. As churches in the U.S. and around the world are beginning to reopen, Christians around the world are celebrating the New Testament outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. First Fruits of Zion founder Boaz Michael explains the deep connection between Pentecost and the biblical feast of Shavuot. The Torah refers to the first five books of the Bible, known also as the Books of Moses. Shavuot is uh, Pentecost, but in Hebrew it's Shavuot. And it's um, the time of traditionally of God giving the people of Israel, the Jewish people, the Torah at Mount Sinai. There's so many beautiful parallels um, that take place with Shavuot. Um, imagine Mount Sinai with the mountains above it, the covenant given to the people of Israel. This reminds us of a hupa over a bride and a groom. It tells us that God is making a covenant with his bride, Israel. There's a marriage that takes place. So Shavuot is a celebration of the giving of the commandments, but more than that, we've been redeemed from Egypt, we've wandered through the wilderness, we've come to Mount Sinai, and we enter into an intimate relationship with Hashem, with God, through the giving of his commandments and the covenant that he gives to us, the Torah at Mount Sinai. And the Haftorah is the selected portion of scripture from the prophets that connects to the Torah reading. And Ezekiel chapter 1 is the Haftorah for Shavuot. And when you read that in parallel to what takes place in Acts chapter 2, it's phenomenal. Ezekiel speaks of these flames above people's heads and this wheel and the spirit and the movement and all these things. And this is what we see taking place. And then we see it in many ways revealed in Acts chapter 2 where the spirit comes down upon the congregation on Shavuot. The nations are represented there. The people that have have feared God, as Psalm 67 says, have come up to this pilgrimage festival. They're in the temple courtyards and the Spirit falls upon them, indicating that God's Spirit is now being multiplied amongst the nations. It's not just for the Jewish people, but it's available to all nations. And all nations, as we see later on throughout the book of Acts, have equal access to that spirit and are equal before God as the Jewish people, as an extension of the people of Israel. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.